Hello, listeners of the Partial Historians, you sick puppies, you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're oh, very kittens. welcome. Kittens, In kittens, please. yes. Yeah. You're very, very welcome. I am one Dr. Radness, and this lady to my right is Dr. Greenfield. Welcome. That is me. Welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Now, we are going to take a slight break from Coriolanus. I know you're all on tenterhooks wondering how his <laughs> trial is going to come out. Will he get off? Will he not? Mm. Will he stay a patrician? Will he <laughs> change and become a plebeian? Ooh, wouldn't that be the ultimate? <laughs> this is how it's going to end up. I'll give you a hint. They've got a needle filled with plebeian blood. They're going <laughs> to stab him and it'll all be over. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the morning and be like, I agree with the tribute. That's right. Be like Spider-Man or something. Anyway. Um, before we get back to that, um, because that's very exciting, I wanted to take a quick uh, <laughs> quick break and talk to Dr. G because she has actually visited the motherland, the fatherland. I don't, I don't know what I want. The source of all of our ancient exactly, knowledge. Exactly. She actually has spent the last month or so in Italy. And so we thought we'd do a special bonus partial historian episode to talk to Dr. G about some of the things that she got to see while she was away. Yeah, it's a bit like Instagram throwback Thursday. Exactly, it? yes. Yeah. Well, those of you who have been on our Facebook page will know that Dr. G has been uh, very kind enough to share some of her holiday snaps. I have been trooping around, yes. Yeah, so, so tell us, where did you start off uh, in terms of location for your travels? I began my journey. In Rome. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'm loving it already. <laughs> you know, why go anywhere else? Really? Exactly, yes. Um, so I was very fortunate. Um, I spent probably about three out of the four weeks that I was in Italy in Rome itself. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. Exciting times. You know, you do all of the things. Um, so I, I last went there in 2008, but this time I had much more time yes. to like sort of wander around and see things. Yeah, the Colosseum, nice. you know, and the classics, and all the classics. So what was um what was perhaps the most meaningful thing to you that you saw while you were there? I think for me, yes. it is always, and nothing has yet trumped this, yeah. um, is the Arapacus. Yes. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, when I, both times I've been in Italy, I'm pretty sure that was closed. Oh, um, no. So I've never actually seen it oh in my, my life. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, no. please, tell us what the Arapacus <laughs> actually is. Okay, so yeah. the, the Arapacus, to give it its full name, the yes. Arapacus Auguste, uh, is this structure mm. that has been constructed late in Augustus's career, yep. which is right in my zone of like interest. Augustus um, being kind of the first emperor, mm, let's say the first real princeps so who ushers in this system of the principate after the death of Julius Caesar around the, and he, he sort of is in charge at the end of the first century BC and into the first century AD. He's like the, yeah, he's like the first slash most famous slash most infamous yes. uh, figure after Julius Caesar. He's the Mac Daddy of uh, <laughs> Princeps. <laughs> you know, if, if anybody makes the Roman Empire happen, That's it's true. this guy's career. That is true. Because yeah. we tend to date the start of the Roman Empire somewhere after the death of Caesar yes. and somewhere in the start of the career of Tiberius. And the person who straddles those two periods... Yeah is Augustus. Yeah, and he is in charge for a long time. Yes. Uh, and one of his boasts, apparently, was that he found Rome a city of brick and left it a city dressed in marble. Oh, and fancy pants it is, too. Yeah. Uh, and I think the Arapacus yeah. actually represents uh, the stylistic epoch, if you like, yes. that, that comes with um, the sort of the height of his power as mm. well. Mm. So this altar of peace... Mm. is awarded to him by the Senate. That's what the Arapacus means. Yes. BT dubs. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing a bit of a Latin translation there. I wish. Uh, <laughs> um, although I can't call it the Arapacus if I'm in Italy because they pronounce things differently. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. It's yeah, the yeah. Arapacus, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is also quite nice. Yeah, um, yeah. But a side note. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the Arapacus is granted to Augustus by the Senate mm. for his commitment to peace. Yes. Well, I mean, of course, before Augustus, you know, when you've got Caesar and Pompey and Crassus and all those sorts of people, and even obviously into Augustus's own sort of period of influence with, you know, the civil wars against um, Brutus and Cassius and, and then Antony, there's been a lot of war. <laughs> it always seems to be the thing with Rome until you get to this period where Augustus can close, uh, sorry, can boast that the um, doors to the temple 
um, oh, the gates of Janus yeah, have yeah. been closed. What is it? It's three three times. times. Yeah, three, three times. times during his rule because there have been periods of extended peace. Yeah. yeah, hilariously. But in order to close those gates three times, yeah. obviously you have to reopen them when That's a war true. happens. That's true. So, <laughs> uh, you know what they say, uh, when one door closes. <laughs> another war opens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. Yeah. All right. No, thank you. Yeah. I mean, at least we amuse ourselves. If yeah. not you, listeners, I, right. I apologize in advance. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he has this... Um, claim of having closed the gates of Janus three yeah. times, which ironically means a lot of warfare has happened and then stopped again. Um, but at least there have been... But it has stopped. There has been... It has stopped. Yeah. And that, that is the important thing that's being commemorated yeah. with this sort of structure. And so it's uh, offered by the Senate in around about 13 BCE. Yeah. Um, after Augustus returns from Gaul. So, you know, he's gotten into a bit of a fight comes back yeah everyone's like peace finally there is peace and, <laughs> and grand amounts of it as well yeah um let us build an altar yes. um and it takes them some time to put it together the whole thing is constructed from marble yes um and i do recommend if you have the opportunity at all um and you happen to be in rome just go there yeah um it is a beautifully preserved um structure in its current Position. Yeah. Um, it has a long history of the excavation and the reconstruction, and there's a bit of Mussolini involved in there. Uh, I know. There's fascists. <laughs> yeah. Co-opting yeah. Roman history. Look, <laughs> yeah. There's there's a lot of things going on with that structure itself and the history of its reconstruction. Mm. Um, but the way that it is currently set up in terms of the museum that has been built around it yes. um, to keep it in humidity and temperature control yep. um it's absolutely a delight to to see yeah um and so what would you be seeing if you go and see Ooh. yeah oh, i'm so <laughs> glad you asked so if you go into this uh museum yeah. of the Arapacus, um what you will find is that you've got like a relatively square like structure which has some steps um going from the south to the north leading in mm -hmm. um, to what is the, the center chamber where there's an altar itself. Right. So this outside construction, it's... We don't know whether it had a roof or not. Probably, maybe. Yeah. Um, we're not sure. Um, but the walls itself on the exterior are highly decorated. Yes. And the top panels around the outside have these very intricate friezes. Mm. And what you find from looking at it from the front where you've got the steps leading in is some a couple of freezers where we don't have many of the pieces yes um and these freezers and the parallel freezers on the back side yeah um depict what appear to be highly symbolic um quite sort of divine mythological sort of ideas and scenes right um and what we get on the sides up the top are continuous freezers that run along the whole length on either side, mm. which is a procession. Yes. And we think this is the a recognition of the procession that would have taken place, or at least a, a depiction of the type of procession that would have happened with the dedication itself and the sure. opening of this uh, altar to the people. Yeah. And there are some representations on um, part of this is uh, Augustus's family itself, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of the figures on one side yes. are family members. Yeah. And we can identify them. And on the other side, there seems to be a lot of functionaries. Right. Uh, which are some random senators. <laughs> you know. you know, People whose <laughs> name have been forgotten by history. <laughs> yes. You know, the Senate can dedicate an altar all they like, and they can even put their face on it, but whether anybody thinks they're worth remembering is <laughs> another thing entirely. Uh, so, yeah, so we got a lot of faces on one side where we're like, oh, yeah, there's some people. Mm. Yeah. There's definitely some people in that possession. They look important. Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely some senators, definitely some priests. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and one side which is like, very clearly, distinctly, including family members mm. of Augustus's broader kinship circle. Yeah, yeah, because when we say family, obviously we mean familia in the yeah, yeah, in the Roman sense of things. all the relatives. All are the involved. relatives, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so cool. you, yeah, you've got a lot of historical bits and pieces that you can pick up by looking at it. Yes, um, and then you've also got um, some beautiful sort of mythological scenes, which scholars continue to argue about what they're actually representing. Yeah, yeah. so one of the most famous um, freezers uh, on the back of this building mm. is the one that is 
thought to be either Telus, Ceres, Pax, Roma. They can't really quite pinpoint who this That's woman quite a range is. Range of characters, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and we talk about the polysemy, um, the multi meanings, yes. um, multiple meanings that can be read into this particular um, image. So you've got this woman who is sort of sitting there and she's holding a child and she's surrounded by other figures, but there's all sorts of vegetation, which is really distinct. And there's Mm. all sorts of animal life, which is very distinct as well. And the multitude of symbolism there is just too much for anybody. Everyone's like, oh my goodness, it could be this person. And somebody's like, yes, but it could also, it could be this person. Yeah, yeah. And by the time you... Uh, spent some time looking at it, you think, well, it could be anybody, couldn't it? Yeah. Um, I guess the main thing is, it seems to be religious in nature. Yeah. (laughs) I noticed that it seems to be mythological. (laughs) So I sense I've got a god here of some kind. Yeah. Um, It's not a realistic scene. Yeah. So we've got that to go with. Yeah. Um, But aside from that, anybody, any guess um, is up for grabs, really. Hmm. It's kind of amazing that it's, it's survived, I suppose, as well. I mean, being Marvel, sometimes these things are sort of stolen and reused <laughs> by <laughs> random yeah. Christians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. They've been finding pieces of this structure since about uh, the 16th century. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they eventually cobbled them all together. Right, okay, um, so they were kind of disemboweled, I suppose. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. broken up into little pieces. Okay, that makes and, sense. Yeah. And there's lots of dispute over whether Mussolini's reconstruction, which is what we have today, right. is Accurate. correct yeah, yeah. as well. How interesting. Mm. Mm. So tell me, what other fantastic sites did you see while you were in Rome? Anything else stand out <laughs> to you? Look, I'm a sucker always for the Roman Forum. Yep, you know. classic. You classic. Know. Well, I mean, it's, it's a good thing to appreciate now. It might not be standing <laughs> Oh, yeah, look, everything is disintegrating. It is it is pretty horrific. Yeah. Um, the state of preservation and the incapacity of the powers that be um, yeah, to I mean, invest what, in that preservation. If I may be so bold, could I ask what your opinion is on this whole situation? I mean, do you think that they should be allowed, I mean, that they're ruins, that they weren't built to last forever, maybe they should be allowed to just sort of slowly deteriorate? Or do you think that there should be yeah, I mean, and let's face it, it would cost a lot of money pumped into this sort of a site to keep it as it currently is for future generations to enjoy. I think it is a very contentious topic. It is. Because yeah. on the one hand, if you're somebody, if you're a Roman today yes. living in Rome, those ruins are often considered an inconvenience sure. to getting anywhere and doing anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, the city is only partially functional yes. uh, as a result of having all of these things that you can't do anything with. Well, I mean, I've, you know, you always hear the classic stories about anyone doing any sort of building work in Rome <laughs> is always like, dig, 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 damn it, a ruin! <laughs> 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 Quick, somebody, yes, you can't actually do any excavations for any new building sites without having an archaeologist on the team because you will find things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is inevitable that stuff will then be found again, then again, and then it must the, be catalogued. You have the privilege of living in Rome. Isn't, you do argument. have the yeah. privilege of living in Rome. Yeah. And when, I've, when I was talking to people who live there, yes. most of them feel like the ruins, one, contribute so much in terms of their understanding of self. Yes. But also the tourism that that brings yeah, in. Yeah, I was going to say, the you, dumb money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There is a real uh, need, if you like, to keep that tourism industry operational. Sure, So yeah. investing in the preservation of what is what remains um, is not the worst idea anybody's ever had. No, definitely. But how do you navigate that with the concerns of the day-to-day lives of Roman citizens yeah. in that city now? I think it's really hard. Mm. And one of the things that I found that people complained about as well was that certain sites used to be open to citizens uh, for free Uh, because you were Roman. Yes. And if you lived in the city, it was part of your Your city and it was part of your privilege as a citizen to just be able to go there and hang out if you wanted to. Yeah. And now a lot of those sites, um, such as the Roman Forum, everybody now must pay a ticket for entry Mm. and you can see how resentment would start to build up being like I live in a city and I can't even access the amenities that this city offers it's a tricky one because I suppose not having that kind of situation myself like you know obviously you grow up in a place like Sydney 
I, I don't think there's ever been a place where I've gone to and they said, "Ah, oh, you were born here? Please, come in. Don't pay the, <laughs> don't pay the entry fee. No it's, fee for you. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not like, I don't think that's ever, ever happened. And, it's, and therefore, it's just not an expectation of mine. Um, but yeah, I can understand, I suppose, if you've grown up with that sort of expectation, then... Well, yeah. it's almost like they're public parks in, yeah. in many respects. Like the Palatine, the Forum, they're, they're open spaces. That's true. And yeah. it, I don't it have... used to be the case that there was just no gate. Yeah, okay, and now yeah. there's a gate. Yeah. Ooh, it's a tricky issue. <laughs> <laughs> it so definitely is a tricky yeah. issue. Yeah. Mm. Um, so were you? Because um, I know it's been a few years since you were in Rome. Were you shocked? Like, could you notice a difference in what was there, or was it more just you, you know you've heard about the collapses and the that sort of thing, and therefore you were sort of on the lookout for them? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I took a very sort of. I was I was trying not to be too much of a historian, to yeah. be honest. What I did notice was that, you know, new places in the forum are now under excavation that weren't under excavation oh, okay. before. Yeah, and yeah. the places that I couldn't get into in the forum, I now had access to. I took a lot of photos yeah. of um, the areas that are associated with the atrium of the Vestals, so the oh, house of the Vestals. Yes, the Vestal yeah. Virgin. Because last time I was there, I couldn't get into that section. There was there was actual archaeological work taking place. Yeah. Nice. And it was all blocked off, and now it's open. I was like, "Oh yes!" So, what oh. did you what did you think? <laughs> oh, you know, it was very exciting. I took pictures of all the statues. Yeah, uh, you know, um, it was just a pleasure to be able to be to be humbled by the experience of being so close. Yeah, uh, to the things that I've spent so long theoretically and abstractly studying, and know, to know that I'm yeah. standing on the on the space. Yeah, uh, in the location where the things that I'm really interested and curious about about ancient Rome were happening yeah um, I think that's just it I think being historians of that part of the world um, from Australia as you and I are um, it often does start to feel like a bit of a, a wonderful story and you don't mind because you enjoy the story but then when you actually go there you're like holy shit this stuff is real <laughs> the, the <laughs> stories were true yeah, tr- <laughs> what are you saying it just sort of blows me? your mind to suddenly realise I'm actually in the place you yeah. know like um, you know I, I felt the same way when I went to you know Capri and Stood up on the the peak at the <laughs> thought know. about all of the boys. <laughs> no, no, I did not. Uh, but yeah, like standing up on the you know on the ruins of the Villa Jovis, like Tiberius's and others, um, sort of royal retreat, I suppose, imperial retreat. Um, and yeah, it was kind of weird to think like this is a view that he would have seen. Like no matter how much else this has changed, this this probably is something that we both share. And it's just such a bizarre connection to have after thousands of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure, and I think it makes you realise that your commitment as a historian is really to find something of the truth of the narrative, if you can. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's incredibly difficult, given what remains. It just and makes it that little bit more concrete, though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 And you're like, you know, I have, <laughs> on some level, a duty to the people who live these lives to try my best to get it right for them. Yeah. You know, and that is compelling as well, I think. Yeah. So tell me, um, when you went a bit further afield, did you bump into any sites of historical significance? Or... Oh, look, I tried to bump into as many historical <laughs> sites as I possibly could. Um, I, I did attempt um, quite strenuously uh, <laughs> to see the Temple of Diana, ah, yes. um, which is on uh, Lake Nemi, which is not very far from Rome at all. Yeah. Um, you can do it as a day trip, not a problem. Um, and actually they'd had an incredible festival there a few months previously. In the temple? Uh, yeah, well, around the ruins and oh, okay, the structure right. of it, yeah. 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 Um, celebrating it um, because it's um, a famous spot in the area. Yeah. So we're talking about the sort of the lake region just to the south of Rome. Sure. And it's important as a structure from my perspective because it, it sits along the Appian Way. Right. Um, in its oldest form, not that you can really follow it that clearly um, today. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I was curious to see it, even though I'm pretty sure it's just a just a pile of stone. Yeah. Um, but we so couldn't get in. <laughs> when 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 would this have been erected initially? The 
That is an excellent question, and you know, I can't even remember. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> with, like, you know, Imperial... Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not... Yeah, like, the details elude me right that's now. That's okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I was on this quest, a failed quest, as it turned out. We uh, ended up driving down a very, very honest, rocky <laughs> road that you could only go one way on, winding down the side of a hill, only to find ourselves at the location, and the man there who was brushing his horse was like, no, oh, it's definitely closed, man. <laughs> it's gonna be close for months. Run away! We're run like, away. Ah, get out! Back up the hill. Seems like a bizarre thing to close if it is just like a pile of rubble. But yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, they do, they had a festival there, so sure. maybe they were trying to let everything like the sort of grass recover yeah, or whatever. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. What I did see, which yes. was exceptionally exciting from my perspective, yeah, um, was a frieze of the Vessel of Virgins, which is kept in a museum in Palermo. Ah, is this the one that you posted about on the Facebook page? Or is this... Well, quite yes, I believe so. I yes, because cool. I was yeah. very excited. Yeah, um, and. I was almost not able to see it as well. Yeah. Um, hilariously. <laughs> <laughs> you know how these things go. Yeah, yeah. Um, in any case, so I'd gone down to Sicily, mm-hmm. um, like a good historian would, to <laughs> yeah. track down the artifact I needed to see. Yeah. Because um, I wanted to see it in person. The pictures that exist of it are all right, mm-hmm. but I wanted to have my own. Yeah. Um, and also to be able to like go back to it and try to do some more detailed looking yeah, at yeah, it sure. to try and figure out what might be happening. Yeah. They seem to be in some sort of um, religious moment. It's some sort of processional thing, but there's also a seated figure. Right. And I was like, it's all very curious. <laughs> so I contacted uh, the museum, uh, the Museo Archeologico, Antonio Salinas Mm -hmm. in Sicily before I'd left and I was like I'm really interested in seeing this artifact what do you think guys (laughs) I'm a scholar Um, (laughs) and they reply back to me very kindly and they're like yeah we don't know you know our museum's under reconstruction at the moment you know it's got renovations going on and we don't we don't know what will be open and closed by the time you get here and I was like fair enough (laughs) and I was like oh well take a risk yeah um after some persuasion and a very kindly uh, museum staff member who had been there for like over 20 years, yeah, um, uh, we were given a private tour of the section of the museum wow. that was closed to the public. That is pretty special. Yeah, yeah. Was it was that because you pulled out your doctor card? <laughs> <laughs> it was because I had a very good Italian guide with nice, me. Nice, nice, nice. Who could uh, <laughs> speak the intricate language of negotiation, which nice. is a little bit beyond me at this point. <laughs> uh, I can smile and, uh, you know, blink with my eyelashes uh, <laughs> quite convincingly but apart from that I don't know if I pass as a doctor because I don't have the right sort of like you know stature or hair colour um, but in any case um, they very kindly um, invited us into the section of the museum um, that was closed for renovations yeah. and not only did I get to see the freeze I was really interested in mm. and to take as many photos as I as I desired but he also ended up giving us a private tour of the whole Etruscan collection Ooh. that they have, um, which is apparently the largest outside of the mainland. Yeah. And there were some incredible pieces there as well. Because, so. yeah, I mean, um, listeners may recall, if they've been with us from the beginning of our journey, um, that, you know, the Etruscans are a rather shady bunch of characters <laughs> because although we know they were, you know, a significant um, presence in Italy and on the Romans, like on Roman culture, there's very little written evidence left from these people. So most of what we have are, in fact, artifacts of some description. Yeah, and some of them are incredibly detailed. So, Mm. like, yeah, so I got to see some sarcophagi that were very intricately carved and, like, with the very traditional Etruscan statue as part of the lid with the reclining and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Eternal Um, slumber. Oh, yes. (laughs) So, yeah, so I have to say it was, yeah, for me, obviously, like, as a historian, there's there's certain things that, like, I will nerdly get excited about about yeah. um, and and nobody else understands why I might be excited which is fine um, <laughs> but yeah I think for anybody who's got an interest in history obviously having a chance to see the cultures that you're really inspired by in front of you is is a real privilege yeah and I suppose it, the thing about somewhere like Italy is um, again something that's sort of hard for us to appreciate sometimes in Australia just because of the nature of our uh, our history peculiar as it is um, that there's just so much for them to take care of, mm. you know, that um, yeah. in some ways, although I do not condone entirely the way <laughs> that they handle management of important sites and that sort of thing, at the same time, 
there's just there's just so much you know it, it requires so much care and attention and money and that sort of thing that yeah uh, I think our minds would boggle if we really sort of put it into perspective like that um, so yeah being able to sort of chew around and see all those sorts of things I can imagine yeah. it's very enlightening yes <laughs> it was mm. any other experiences you'd like to share with us Dr. D before we depart or? look I think that's I think that pretty much sums up all of the major highlights for me nice. I mean I did spend a lot of time doing nothing yeah well, so. it was a holiday I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't like this was like a partial historian's <laughs> jaunt <laughs> if only yeah that's right. a partially partially funded oh wow <laughs> that's what we could do <laughs> alright well thank you very much for sharing some of your holiday experiences with us Dr G a pleasure and I hope that the listeners enjoyed hearing about some of the highlights of your journey oh me too <laughs> <laughs>